I'm your host Pete Hegseth. Look outside your window right now. Do you see your neighbors fighting in the streets with bayonets and cannons? When's the last time you saw Union and Confederate soldiers charging at each other on horseback? In case you haven't heard, in case you missed it, we're in the middle of yet another civil war. And the only way to save our republic is to make sure Democrats completely control elections by keeping them nice and wide open. The assault on free and fair elections is just such a threat, literally. I've said it before. We're facing the most significant test of our democracy since the Civil War. That's not hyperbole. Since the Civil War. <laughs> literally, as the clip goes on, he says it many times. How many times can one human being say literally without saying anything that is actually literal? But if you don't believe we're in a civil war, maybe you'll believe that all Republican voting bills are racist. The 21st century Jim Crow assault is real. It's unrelenting. It was a doozy. It is unrelenting racism. Using sheer fear tactics and, of course, maximum hyperbole in their ultimate quest for power, well, that's nothing new for the left. But with issues like, I don't know, rising crime, door-to-door -door vaccines, by the way, we have an update on that. Thank you, local news. The border crisis and rapid inflation, the task of convincing voters that Jim Crow is back at the ballot box, I don't think it's working. The American people and their sane state legislators, they're starting to catch on. So this week, Texas Democrats, well, they tried something new. They chartered a couple of private jets, loaded up a case of beer, and fled to Washington, D.C. Now, why did they do that? Because in Texas, a minimum amount of lawmakers are required to be present in order to advance laws. By abandoning this state like huddled in heroic refugees, Texas Democrats can avoid their legal obligation to show up and actually do their job. Look at those selfies. Big old smiles. So proud of themselves. And they get to temporarily prevent the Republican majority from protecting the ballot box. They took like 10 or 15 of these selfies. I mean, you can't, we, it's not hard to find an original. Today, the jet-setting and suddenly popular Texas Democrats took meetings with Chuck Schumer and Kamala Harris, both of whom managed to put their dereliction of duty into the proper historical context. In 1867, Frederick Douglass appealed to the Congress, the United States Congress, for the right for black men to vote. 1913, women marched down Pennsylvania Avenue for the right to vote. And 2021, the Texas legislature came to Washington, D.C. Mr. Smith comes to Washington. Who knew the 2021 Texas legislature on par with Frederick Douglass and the suffrage movement? Just put it in the textbooks right now. The apocalyptic and historic Republican voting bill included some very radical restrictions, like, I don't know, requiring driver's license or Social Security numbers for mail-in voting. We're not talking about uh, photocopying IDs here. We're just talking about voter identification for mail-in ballots. Beefing up criminal penalties for election workers who break rules. Now, we know Dems, they don't like penalties, especially when you burn things. And adding an extra hour for early voting each day from eight hours, which it currently is, to nine hours at a minimum. Keep in mind, Texas already has 17, 17 days of early voting on Election Day. Good luck, Texas voters. How are you going to find 15 minutes within 17 days in at least a nine-hour window each day? Sheer suppression. Now Texas Democrats will eventually have to come back and do their job. Governor Abbott can continue to call special sessions to force this vote, unless, of course, they plan to flee forever. So why do they go through all that effort to stall the inevitable? Because it's not just about the Lone Star State. The Texas Democrats fled the front lines. They retreated from the voting rights equivalent of the Civil War, not to surrender, but to draft federal reinforcements. We are living right now on borrowed time in Texas. And we can't stay here indefinitely to run out the clock to stop Republican anti-voter bills. That's why we need Congress to act now and pass the For the People Act. 
We need the president and the vice president and every Democrat in this Senate working together to preserve American democracy. Ah, this is a stunt. This is about H.R. 1. This is about federal control of elections. This is about Nancy Pelosi. The plan is in motion. The country is watching. And the Texas Democrats, they're loving their newfound media attention. They even decided to inspire fellow Democrats and all patriots nationwide by performing this beautiful song. We will There you have it. Here now, a member of that chorus, Democrat Texas State Representative James Tallarico, who recently flew on a private plane and currently resides in Washington, D.C. James, thank you very much for being here. Now, we know you met with Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi today, and the, and the talking points, they've been issued. Uh, you've been told to say you're protecting democracy, that Republicans are authoritarians and racist, they're blocking the ballot box, you want voter suppression. I've got it. Texas Republicans are racist. But you're in D.C. now, and the talk is all about H.R. 1, and you're, they're gleefully promoting your effort to promote their national effort. It kind of seems like they're just using you as a prop or a puppet. So, you know, I'm an eighth-generation Texan. I've only been in D.C. twice in my life. This is the second time. Uh, I'm a former middle school teacher who ran for office just to try to make my community better. And I swore an oath when I first got elected two years ago to uphold the Constitution, the Constitution of the United States, and also the Constitution of the great state of Texas. And after our former president, Donald Trump, started his big lie that the election was stolen, Republican legislators and Capitol Wait, how did you make this about Donald Trump in 20 seconds? That's a, that's a bit of a record. So now that's, you're going to voter suppression, which I get it. But if this is all about your allegiance to Texas and you're an eighth generation Texan and all that and the Constitution, by the way, the Constitution, Section 1, Article 4, gives authority to the state legislatures, then why are you not in Texas? And why are you in Washington, D.C., doing press conferences with federal officials? I, I was just going to answer that. Um, it's, a, it's a great question. And what I was saying is when um, President Trump lost the election, he told Republicans across the country that he didn't lose the election. And this caused Republican legislators in state capitals from Georgia to Austin to start putting forward bills that would make it harder to vote. And actually, it's, it's, Texas is one of the hardest places to vote in the whole country. And so when this oh, started, many He's... of my Democratic colleagues tried to negotiate with our fellow <laughs> Uh, legislators, most of them Republicans, to try to make the bill less damaging, less harmful, less dangerous to constituencies across the state of Texas. Unfortunately, our Republican colleagues didn't want Is to negotiate with us. Is 17 days of early voting and adding an hour of voting too much? Is it too difficult to provide, I don't know, your driver's license number uh, and the fast, last four digits of your Social Security number? Is that too much to ask a voter in Texas? So what this bill does, and I'm glad you asked because it gives me an opportunity to correct something you said earlier, which is that this bill actually reduces the amount of time for early voting. Oh, it does. Um, in, yeah. So in, in Texas, currently, a county can extend voting to 24 hours. You can actually vote all night, which is really convenient if you work during the day. A lot of working folks aren't able to get so off work to go vote. It's voting and at now 2 a.m. in the is morning. That is there, it's voting at 2 a.m. in the morning the that is the key issue. Is, is, it, is there anyone in Texas that's not currently able to vote? Because I've heard the hyperbole. This is Jim Crow. This is voter repression. This is the civil war from the leadership of your party. Is there currently a single example you can provide me of a registered citizen voter in Texas that can't vote if we're fighting well, the civil war here? Thankfully, this bill has not passed yet, and God willing, it won't pass. No, if the bill passes, the, the will there be Texas any there will be, minority or woman that's not able to vote? So the person who oversees elections is appointed by a Republican in the state of Texas. It's a Republican-appointed secretary of state. And she actually said that Texas's elections in the past two cycles were safe, smooth, and secure. Those were the three okay. words that she used to but describe it. But we also it. had, so as you pointed out, your party has pointed problem. out time and time again, we needed to expand these things because of COVID. And by the way, I didn't see a whole lot of COVID going on on that private plane uh, without those masks, but, but I digress. So if COVID's not there... And or ultimately minimized in, in our application, shouldn't we be making sure that the rules go go to go back to something that makes sense, that's reasonable? You know, I, 
I, that's a great question. I think, you know, in the pandemic, we learned that a lot of things can be made more convenient and more accessible. You know, a lot of folks are working from home instead of having to go into the office. Uh, and that's exactly what we learned in voting. We could we can change some quick, of our voting quick, systems to be more quick question. accessible. Are you to okay more with people, voter ID? I, are you I okay think, with voter ID? Because you're going back to the talking points. I get it. The talking points have been issued. Are, 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 are you so, okay with voter ID? So voter ID is currently required in the state of Texas. I, I opposed having to How about have a for mail-in ballots? To vote. How about having to send your ballot in? Should you have to prove who Sorry, you are? Because that's Pete, what I, Democrats I just, are opposing. <laughs> Pete, I just said I, I oppose voter ID. Currently, it's a law in Texas, but I oppose that law because you I think you don't need You oppose voter ID? You, you don't, don't need... think the most sacred <laughs> obligation of our republic, you should have to prove who you are in order to vote? So there are a lot of Texans, actually hundreds of thousands, who don't have a driver's license, who, whoa, who whoa, don't, whoa, whoa, whoa. don't drive who at all. Who can't? Do they have and a Social Security number? Because according this, to this Republican law, you can put your last four digits of your Social Security number in Pete, as proof of who you are. Do they not? Pete, no, help me out. Do those people not have Social Security numbers? And, Pete, and who are these people that can't get IDs? <laughs> so, Pete, if you're talking about the bill that we're currently focused on, not past Texas law, what this bill is going to do is not only reduce voting hours, it's also going to empower these partisan poll watchers who are going to look over oh, voters' shoulders and prevent them from exercising their Partisan poll watchers, you mean the ones right. that weren't allowed in certain states at certain times, in certain yep. places, whether you agree with that or not. So Texas so, says <laughs> maybe we should have partisan poll watchers on either side, Republicans so, Pete, and Democrats, right? It wouldn't I just be Republicans. Do you, remember, do you remember a second ago when I talked about the big lie? This is exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, and the reason that so many folks believe you in this just, country you just is got because went folks on like national you get on television, television James, Every night and said, and you don't want voter ID. Again. We're not talking about that. We, we, I, we just, you just went I, on national television and said, you listen, don't want Pete, voter ID, revealing Pete, exactly what Democrats... And it's so condescending to say that people can't get identification. Do, Pete, have, you, you, have you found listen, someone you, in your district that can't get identification? You have made a lot of money personally, and you've enriched a lot of corporations <laughs> with advertising by getting on here and spewing lies and conspiracy theories to folks who now trust you. About my and so what I'm asking you to do is I to see. tell your voters right now that Donald Trump hey, lost the election you in 2020. Can you, can you, can you, at least you, you resolve the lie that is did you, Democrats did you are now for asked? voter ID. It's not did you your show, sir. But at least, did, I, at least you resolve the Trump, idea that Democrats are not for voter ID. Did Donald Trump lose the election in 2020? Real quick. Can you answer the question? Did Donald Trump lose the election in 2020? I'm questions. I'm not... Don't is, really this, feel is, this, is this an uncomfortable, to an uncomfortable question for you? No, it's See, this is the, the, well, Pete, the my question is, is why are you in Washington, D.C. and not in Texas when your job is in Texas? Because you know it's inevitable that this bill is going to pass. Eventually, you're going to have to pay your hotel bill and go back to Texas and Governor Abbott will declare a special session. So you're being used by national Democrats to try to pass H.R. 1 to federalize elections, which you as a Harvard grad should know better because the Constitution puts that in the hands of state legislators who are supposed to be in their state, and you happen to be in Washington, D.C. So I, I don't understand I how earlier, you square that circle. I, I can answer. So based on the, the, the oath that I took for this office, mm -hmm. I have to uphold the Constitution. The I have to uphold flee. our democratic system. And I, as a Texas Democrat, I'll tell you this, we lose a lot on the floor of the Texas House. Uh, we lose votes on abortion and guns and, and immigration. Are you going to flee the state on those? Why is this number one? Is this the biggest? democracy is supposed to work. All right. The reason we're this not, is we're, different, we're going Pete, back. the reason this is different is that they're trying to rig the rules of the game. Oh, we can debate rig issues. the rules of the game. We can I debate see. issues, Asking but we cannot. to prove who they are. Real quick, I'm going to end with this. democracy itself. Your, your party's been obsessed with COVID standards, yet, yet the CDC and the White House says we need to wear one on a plane. Why didn't you guys? So all of us are fully vaccinated. They got on okay. a plane without a mask. Per got, CDC if you're fully guidance, vaccinated, can I get on a plane then? Got all it. we're trying okay, to do good. is follow hey, science. As long as I know that you know support that you. if you're fully vaccinated, you get on a plane. That we seems like a good official position. We are trying to serve our constituents. Unlike yep, our home state senator well. who fled our state serving not well. to serve constituents, James but to abandon them. Enjoy your time in Washington, D.C. Look forward to seeing you back in Texas, maybe in weeks, maybe in months. We'll see at which point. Thanks, Pete. Voter ID law may or may not get passed. Wow, that was interesting. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.